What's up guys, Sean the Bro here. In today's episode of the first person shooter tutorial series, we are going to be going over shotguns. So this is the first episode of shotguns, and essentially what we are going to do is just make a weapon type of shotgun and set it up. There's way more that we have to do to actually configure the logic. But of course, before we can get into that, we have to have an object that is represented as a shotgun. So I have this crazy skin weapon. The mesh is the same as the blaster, but I have changed it to have this material on it that is going to be representing my shotgun because I don't have a shotgun mesh right now. And I can shoot. <laughs> I have a really, really tiny distance with my shotgun shell. And that is not how our shotgun is going to react. But I just did this for demonstration purposes. So with that said, let's go ahead and get started. Now, this is a code and blueprint tutorial series. We're going to be doing a lot of our logic in the code. So let's go ahead and start there. Let's go to Visual Studio. And I'm going to go to my base weapon.h to start. This is my base weapon, as it says. So all my weapons are children of this. So my base weapon could be my blaster, but we also have the assault rifle, the submachine gun. And now we're going to add the shotgun. So right here, we have this enum E weapon type. And this is going to determine what type of weapon this is. It doesn't mean it's determining the exact weapon. You could have multiple shotguns, you could have multiple assault rifles. This just is determining the type of the weapon. In this case, it's going to be shotgun. So I want to add a new value to this. So after my submachine gun, I added a comma and used E shotgun as my new value. Gave it a U meta display name of shotgun. So when we're looking at it in the blueprint, it looks like this. You could go ahead and make a base shotgun class like I have here. I'm not going to go into these today. This is for the next episode. This is not actually required. We can do everything in base weapon and just have blueprint children of base weapon and it will work. So don't really need to go that route. I'm going to do everything in base weapon today. So for example, if I was going to use base weapon.h as my parent class for my shotgun BP, I could go ahead and add a variable for something like the number of pellets in a shotgun blast. So I have this integer num pellets and it is exposed to the blueprint using blueprint rewrite edit anywhere with a category of shotgun. We are not going to do anything with it today. You don't have to do this. Again, I'm going over this more in the next episode. I'm just showing you an example. All right, the next thing we're going to want to do is go to base ammo.h. This ammo is the ammo that actually comes out of our weapon. So since we didn't go into shooting it yet, I hadn't set it up beforehand, but we should absolutely have a shotgun ammo type. So I'm going to add it now, E underscore shotgun, and I'm going to do umeta display name equals shotgun and for consistency i'm removing these underscores there we go so we have an ammo type of shotgun as well these could be shells or other types of ammo that your shotgun's going to use but the standard shotgun ammo type will work for this so now we have our ammo type and our weapon type we need to now handle the shotgun type for every possible scenario so when shooting weapons, when reloading weapons, when calculating ammo, we need to use the shotgun type. To do this, let's go to our FPS tutorial character .h. And in here, we store variables for all of our different types of ammo. This is the amount of ammo that the character currently has on them for each of these types. So instead of having a generic ammo, we have ammo that is relative to assault rifles, ammo relative to pistols, submachine guns, and now shotguns. I went in and I added a shotgun ammo variable, int shotgun ammo, and I've given it a U property of edit anywhere, blueprint read write, with a category of weapon. So now the character can store the amount of shotgun ammo that they have. If we go into the FPS tutorial character.cpp and scroll down to the constructor where we set all the default values, we can assign a default amount of shotgun ammo that they have on them. I gave them a 16 by default, but you can give them literally any number you want. You could give them zero. If you don't want to start with any, you could give them a clip full or more, whatever. It doesn't really matter. My character will start with 16 shotgun ammo on them. Now, really what we need to do is find wherever we use our E weapon type and handle it for shotguns. So I do know where these are at because I went through it before this, but we should just control F to bring up the find up here and search for E weapon type. When we do this, it will bring us to the part of the code that uses this enum variable. From here, we can easily adjust the logic to include shotguns. So the first one that comes up is reload weapon. And so reload weapon takes into account the remaining ammo of the given type that the character has on them. 
So in this case, we were checking to see if the current weapon that we are on is equal to an assault rifle. So basically, is the character holding an assault rifle? And if it is, do they have more than zero assault rifle ammo? Essentially, can they reload any? We did the same thing for pistols and then submachine guns. Now we want to do this for shotguns as well. So I've added another ore here and we use our weapons at weapon index and grab the weapon type. So the current weapon that we have and check it against the E weapon type colon colon E underscore shotgun that we just made earlier in the episode. If our current weapon is a shotgun, then we need to make sure that our shotgun ammo is greater than zero if we go to reload it. Otherwise we cannot reload our shotgun. We add an and here and check and make sure the shotgun ammo is greater than zero. If this is true, we can go into this if statement. At this point, we have a switch statement on our weapon type to determine what type of weapon it is. And now we have to make sure we handle the shotgun case. So you can just add a new case, E weapon type, colon, colon, E underscore shotgun. And if it is a shotgun, remember, we're calculating the remaining shotgun ammo. So we need to set shotgun ammo equal to calculate ammo, and then we're passing in the shotgun ammo. At this point, I've gone through all my E weapon types. They're all in reload weapon at the moment. So we're good to go. We don't have to change anything else regarding that weapon type in this class. Now, let's go back into the editor and I'll show you the blueprint side of things. Now I'm loaded back into the editor. The first thing we need to do is make a shotgun BP class. Now, whether you're doing the base weapon as the parent or you went ahead and made that shotgun, that base shotgun class that I mentioned earlier, this will work for both methods. We'll need this either way. And additionally, changing the parent class is super easy. So any method you choose here is the right one. Let's just go ahead and make a blueprint class and we'll worry about more advanced stuff in the next episode of this, like I keep mentioning. So don't worry, this is just part one. So I'm gonna go to my weapons right here. So FP weapon, weapons, and this is where I make my weapons. So at this point, you can either right click on your base weapon BP and create a child blueprint class, or you could hit add blueprint class and then go to the all classes and search for base weapon BP. And if you spell it correctly, it will come up here and you can select it and make your new class. After doing that, I called mine a shotgun BP. So I'm gonna go into here and we're gonna make sure all of our logic is set up correctly. So I don't have anything in the graph for this weapon. So it's opened up in this view here where you can just see the default values and that's perfectly fine. You'll see that I have assigned the index to three. If you don't remember the weapon index, this is for if you wanna have a weapon wheel or something similar, like in Doom where your weapons have specific slots that they go into. So even if you pick them up out of order, they will still go to that slot. If that's what you want, then make sure your index is set. So for me, I've had three weapons prior to this point, zero, one, and two. So this fourth weapon is index three. For the name, I called it the deleter. The weapon type should be set to shotgun. The weapon mode actually can work for shotgun, single fire, burst fire, and auto. I'm gonna leave this one a single. The fire type could be projectile or hit scan, depending on how you wanna do it. Then you can pick your crosshairs, your fire sound, your swap sound, all that good stuff. Additionally, Go down to the ammo section here. You can set the max total ammo that the character can hold, the max amount of ammo that is in a clip for the shotgun, the current total ammo when you pick up the shotgun, and the current total ammo in the clip when you pick up the shotgun. So set these all up. I just made it 64 for the totals and eights for the currents. Then we have our num pellets that we added. Again, it's not going to be used today, but it is going to be used in the next episode. So if you set this up, feel free to assign a random number of pellets, like eight to it, just for future use. We have the stats section here, and this is all up to you. So you have your reload time, your fire rate, your damage, your weak point damage multiplier, your projectile speed, your projectile drop off, and your burst fire time between. At this point, I'm gonna open the full blueprint because I wanna show you what it looks like. So again, there's nothing in the graph. You don't have to delete these modes, but you can if you want to. Then we can go to the viewport. So here I have a skeletal mesh, which is because my base weapon BP had a skeletal mesh. I didn't have to add this or anything. And I assigned it the same skeleton that my regular blaster has, but I changed the material to be this KA47 gold, which is part of the same bundle that the realistic weapons I have came from. So thank you for that FPS weapon bundle on the Epic Marketplace. But just know my crazy colored weapon here is representing my shotgun in this case. 
You don't have to change anything else about any of these things. You don't have to change the mesh. You don't have to change the ADS camera or the pickup collider. You can if you want to. Remember, this is your weapon. Set it up how you want, but nothing else is required. At this point, we can exit out of the shotgun BP. We don't need it right now. Next thing we need is the ammo type. So we can go to our ammo, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to make a child class of our base ammo BP and make it for the shotgun ammo. So if you are to add another blueprint class of your base ammo BP, then hit select and call it shotgun ammo BP, you'll get this. At this point, we have our variables that we want to set up for our shotgun ammo. So we have our speed and our drop off. Remember, in my case, these are determined by the weapon. I don't actually set them outright in the ammo, but you could if you wanted to. I did not, so I'm just leaving them as default. I'm gonna open the full blueprint editor, and I'm gonna go to the viewport, and I have this static mesh is my shotgun shell. So this is another part of the FPS weapon bundle, but you can use any skeletal mesh that you want or any static mesh that you want, and then any material that you want as well. Again, nothing on here has to be set up a certain way. Because of my orientation, my rotation is 270 degrees on the Z axis. That allows the shotgun shell to come out the right direction. You might have a different value. All your other ammo types should be the same. You may need to rotate it and scale it, but other than that, this can be left alone. So there is our shotgun ammo BP. Let's go back to our weapons and specifically let's go to the base weapon BP because the base weapon BP is where our logic occurs for pretty much all of our weapons. The children weapons have their own unique logic if we decide to override things in them and they also have the defaults for the classes but the base weapon is where all of our main logic occurs. We have this fire weapon event and in here we determine if the fire type is projectile or hit scan we spawn the ammo accordingly. So in my case, if it's a projectile, I come up here and I go into this logic. One way or another, we are spawning the projectile at the crosshairs. Otherwise, we're creating the ray traces at the crosshairs. Right now, we're going to keep it on the projectile just for the demonstration. And so I want to go into my spawn projectile at crosshairs function. This was set up way earlier in the series. But there is a switch statement on our weapon type in here to determine what type of ammo we're spawning. Our e-weapon type now includes the shotgun type, so we do need to handle this case. So the top three should have already been handled, assault rifle, pistol, and submachine gun. But shotgun also needs to have behavior. So we are going to use another spawn actor from class. And we want to select our shotgun ammo BP. The transform, the owner, the speed, the drop off are all things we set in our other spawn actor nodes in here. We do this by using self as the owner, the transform that we make earlier in the function as the transform, and the projectile speed and projectile drop off in the speed and drop off sections. So go ahead and just drag all these things in. Again, transform, same transform as the others. Self is being used as the owner. Projectile speed is the speed, and drop off is the drop off. All right, perfect. Now we need to go into our base character VP, so our character blueprint. So base character VP, this is the character that we are playing as. In here, we have this event switch weapon. And this is going to attach the proper weapon at the correct spot so that we can actually hold it. Again, this uses the E weapon type and course we need to handle the shotgun instance so we're going to do the same thing as we did for all the other nodes we're going to attach the actor to component so we have attach actor to component and in this case i am taking my weapon at weapon index as my target this is what we're attaching and the parent is what we're attaching it to, which is the character mesh. For the socket name, I've gone over this in previous episodes. If you have a socket on your weapon for where you would like your hands to go or where you would like to put the weapon in the character's hands, you can use it here. I'm using weapon socket again because weapon socket is what I used for my blaster right here. And it really is the same model, just a different material. So this will make it fit perfectly, but you may need to use a different one. 
then the location, rotation, and scale rule can all be snapped to target. And there we go. So that is this node right here, and we're going to call it if the weapon type is shotgun. Comes down here, attach actor to component, then just bring it into the same behavior that all the other ones do. Now we can actually switch to this weapon, so that's good. Let's go ahead and set up our HUD. So I need to go to the Blueprints, Widgets, Character HUD. I'm going to go to the graph. Now, there are a few things we need to do in here, but they're all pretty simple. So in our function list, I have renamed all of these because they have the default names of like get, AR, ammo, text, underscore, text, underscore, zero. I just took away the extra nonsense that's not needed to be in there. So we just have like get, AR, ammo, text now. And that's pretty much it. The first place we need to go to is our get shotgun ammo text function that we had. So I had this originally because we actually created this before we had any sort of real weapon types. It was a template, but for some reason, I continue to fill out this function using submachine gun ammo instead of shotgun ammo. So I never renamed the function, so it's get shotgun ammo text, and it was using submachine gun ammo here. So what I've done now is I've replaced that with character reference shotgun ammo, and I'm returning that into the node so that the get shotgun ammo text is actually using the shotgun ammo. Then I made a new function called get SMG ammo text right here. And in here is where we are getting the character reference and then grabbing the submachine gun ammo. So nothing complicated here. It was just really a naming issue, but we need to make sure that we have a new function for our shotgun ammo text. So make sure you have four different types of ammo. If you're like me and you have four weapons right now, assault rifle, pistol, SMG, and shotgun. Also make sure they actually return the right ammo type. So shotgun ammo should return shotgun ammo. SMG ammo should return submachine gun ammo. Now the other thing we need to do is go to the get ammo function. This retrieves how much ammo there actually is for the current weapon as well as the total ammo for the weapon. And in here we handle that weapon type one more time. So of course in here we need to also handle the shotgun type. So where we do the switch on e weapon type, we are going to do the same thing as we see in all these other examples. We are going to drag off the shotgun. We're going to get the shotgun ammo off of our character reference. Get shotgun ammo. And then we need to set the total weapon ammo variable to that. So if we set total weapon ammo and drag the integer in, it will automatically convert integer to string, and you'll get this node here. And now your shotgun ammo will be displayed as the total weapon ammo here. So drag off the shotgun, set this, and then bring it into the rest of the logic that all the other weapons do. Also going to clean this up real quick. Small updates, but just so nothing is overlapping with each other and it's a little bit easier to read. So there we go. So our HUD will show the proper value. Anyway, guys, that's all I got. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please subscribe and consider joining the Patreon, YouTube membership, or Discord server subscriptions like so many kind souls have. If you had any issues with this tutorial or any of my tutorials, feel free to join the Discord community. I'd be happy to help you out, and it is completely free. Like I said, guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Sean the Bro, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye, guys.